All right, so in this video, we're going to be resolving force vectors uh, or drawing force vector diagrams. Uh, now, these can get a little bit confusing at times, so make sure you're switched on and sort of thinking about it a little bit. Um, and th there's some basic types, so make sure that you sort of follow through on these basic types and sort of commit them to memory a little bit in how they work, because sometimes it's a bit counterintuitive. All right, so I'm going to do these uh, six examples. A stationary person, so a person just standing there. Uh, a car that is travelling at a constant speed. A car that is speeding up. Uh, a cricket ball that is flying through the air. A ball rolling down a slope. And a parachuter going down towards the earth at a constant velocity downwards. So he's not speeding up or slowing down on the way down. So he's kind of like our car, I suppose, but he's travelling downwards here. Okay, so first of all, the stationary person. So here's our stationary person. I'll just draw him on the screen. Now, uh, there are two forces acting on our person. There is a, a force or a vector or a force vector acting downwards. And we call that the W vector. And that's the weight due to gravity, the weight pulling the person down to earth. Now, there has to be an equal and opposite force um, acting on that person. Otherwise, he's going to fall through the earth. He's going to fall into the centre of the earth. So there has to be some other force acting on him to stop him from falling through the ground. And we call that the normal contact force. Now, those vectors are equal. And if we were to add them together, top to tail, we'd get an answer of zero. All right, so they're equal and opposite. It's called the normal contact force. Just quickly, it's called normal contact force, not um, like usual. Normal in the mathematical sense, it's perpendicular. The word normal means perpendicular. It's perpendicular to the ground. It makes a right angle with the ground. That's what we mean by normal contact force. All right, so there's our first person standing, uh, standing still. Let's look at a car traveling. All right, so here's our car traveling at a constant. Notice that it has a weight. There's still, even though it's traveling that way, there's still force pushing it down into the ground, the, the weight due to gravity from falling through the road, the normal contact force. So in that way, a car traveling along at a constant speed is the same as a person standing. Now, what makes a difference are these two forces here. Um, there is an applied force, sort of the pedal to the metal, the thing that's the engine turning, but also the drag or resistance. Now, it's important to note that if it is moving at a constant velocity, the applied force and the drag or resistance force are equal. Now, that might seem counterintuitive uh, because it's not you would think that if the applied force and the drag resistance force were not were equal, then the car wouldn't be going anywhere. But it, at some point in the past, it accelerated up to a speed, and now to maintain that speed, not to slow down and not to speed up, um, those forces would need to be equal. Which brings us to our next uh, diagram, which is an accelerating car. And so you can see in the in the version of an accelerating car, it's identical, only the applied force is much, much larger than the uh, drag or resistance. So this car is, has this, this accelerating car has this force diagram. So if you imagine a car leaving a, a parking spot, it starts off, it speeds up and it gets up to speed, it gets up to 60 kilometers an hour. Once it reaches 60 kilometers an hour, its force diagram starts to look like that just to maintain its speed. Now, of course, if it's slowing down, that acceleration um, will change, will we'll get smaller, and that's how you'll stop the car. Okay, next. All right, so this is a cricket ball flying through the air. So if a cricket ball is flying through the air, it's being acted upon by two different forces. It's being acted upon by its, its weight towards the ground, now, there's no normal contact force because it's not sitting on the ground, but there is a drag force that's slowing the cricket ball down. Because if you think about it, once the ball is in the air, I've thrown it as hard as I can, let's say, the minute it leaves my hand, it starts slowing down. And it's slowing down for two reasons. It's slowing down because of the force acting on it from the earth, 
but it's also slowing down because of the drag that's acting in the opposite direction to which the ball is traveling. Now there is no applied force, there's no vector there because there's no engine in a, in a, in a cricket ball. All right, so the force is applied when I first throw it, but after that, it's all drag, it's all slowing down, it's all coming back down to earth. Okay, so we've done a few now. Let's take a look. We did the man, the constant velocity, the accelerating car. We did a ball flying through the air. Now, this is a ball rolling down a slope. Okay, so looking at this, this ball, I'll just draw the slope in so you can see. There's the slope. Here's our ball. Now, there are three vectors. Still gravity, and you can notice gravity is still working straight down. It always works straight down. Um, now, there is a normal contact force, but remember what I said about the normal contact force. It's perpendicular, and it's perpendicular to the surface that your thing is, is sitting on. So it makes a right angle with the uh, ramp. And then there's a vector here, a friction vector. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, but hang on, the ball's traveling in this direction. Again, there's no motor in this ball, um, so there's no vector, there's no applied force vector. Now, this ball will speed up, though. It'll speed up because um, the weight of the Earth is outweighing the, the force or the friction force there. Uh, so it will speed up as it goes down the hill. Uh, finally, we have our parachuter. So here's our parachute guy. That's not a parachute. Okay, good enough. There's my parachute guy. He's got gravity acting upon him. He's got the drag of his parachute there, and they are equal. He's not decelerating. He's not accelerating. He's still falling to earth, though, because he accelerated at some point in the past to a falling to earth speed. Um, but now that he's moving at a constant rate, those two match up. That's, I keep harping on that because that's the, probably the most common mistake people make in questions like these. So that's our force diagrams. Um, make sure that you're comfortable drawing them. Make sure you understand the logic behind drawing those. Practice and then we'll do some calculations using this stuff.